Hello class. Welcome to today's lesson, which is 2.10. This is the last lesson of the second stage. And the lesson is about operations with algebraic fractions. We're going to do this maybe in two parts or maybe even possibly three parts. So that thing I told you yesterday that today we were going to finish the second stage. Uh, I'm going to change that a little bit because I want to do this slowly. If I give you all the information in just one class, I'm going to overload you with, with information. That's never a good idea. So we're going to do this slowly in either two or three parts. So let's, let's do it. So basically, today we're going to add and subtract algebraic fractions. That's going to be the goal. Add and subtract algebraic fractions. And let me remind you that an algebraic fraction, uh, let's write algebraic, oops, algebraic fraction is something of the type, for example, 2x minus 1 over 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, something like this, okay? It's when we have a polynomial over another polynomial. That's an algebraic fraction. Okay, so let's start this lesson. Okay, first I want to tell you, we're going to perform some addition and subtraction of fractions, but not algebraic, just numerical, okay, because I want to point out several things. So we have three cases. The first case is when we have something like this, one half plus, let's say, four halves. When you have the same denominator in your fractions, okay, the... The performing of this addition is very simple, right? We just add the numerator, 1 plus 4, that's going to be 5, and the denominator is kept the same. You see? It's very simple, right? 3 sevenths minus 5 sevenths. Again, same denominator. So we simply perform the, the operation with the numerators, 3 minus 5, that's minus 2, over 7, and this is the result, right? So when the denominator is the same, Addition and subtraction of fractions is quite simple. It doesn't take any, any skill. Now, the other case is when they are not the same, when the denominators are not the same. For example, what if we have once one, uh, one half plus one third? Okay, so the denominators are not the same. And I know, I know, I know that you know how to do this already. You know, you, you have this thing that is called uh, the cross product or something like that. You multiply one, one times this, you get this, and then one times two, you get two, and then perhaps two times three, and you get six and six, and then you add these two, and you get the result. Something like that, okay? Some, some form of this. I, I know for a fact that you know how to perform this already. So we know the answer is going to be five over six. But I want you to understand really what you are doing with this process, okay? Because maybe you were just told that without any reason at all for doing so. And let me tell you what really is happening. What's happening, guys, is that we are transforming this, this operation, okay? This is my, my problem, so to speak. And I'm, I'm going to transform it into an equivalent problem. An equivalent problem. What does that mean? Okay, if you remember, we can have any fraction. I'm gonna go over here now for a while. For example, let's let's choose one half, just the same as this. And uh, I can produce equivalent fractions to this one by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. If I do that, for example, let's say three, one times three and two times three. I can produce another fraction, which is going to be 3 over 6, right? And this new fraction is really not new. It's the same as 1 half. It's exactly the same, right? It just looks different. It's, it's, it's what we know as an equivalent fraction, okay? But it's not different. They are the same number. This thing and this thing are the same number. Now, what if I multiply by... 8 instead. Both numbers by 8, I'm going to get 8 over 16. And this is again, one more time, an equivalent fraction to 1 half. 
So what is the idea? What is the, the pattern? When I have a fraction, I can multiply numerator and denominator by the same number, the same integer or any number really, and I can come up with an equivalent fraction. And that's, we can always do that, always, all the time. It doesn't matter what type of fraction we have. If I give you this, a over b, and I multiply this by, by a number c, and this by a number c, what should I get? I'm going to get ac over bc, and this fraction is completely equivalent, completely the same as this. Okay, I want you to understand that very well. Perfect. So why am, why did I why did I explain this to you? Because of this. Look, what is happening here really is uh, the same as here, or something very similar. What we're gonna do is produce another two fractions, one here and one in here, such that this one will be equivalent to this. This one will be equivalent to this. And with the particularity that the denominators of these two fractions will be the same. For example, let me let me put the, the, the dummy, like number over number, like the, you know, the, the fraction notation, something over something, something over something. So I, I need to fill these two places, right? I need to fill my number here, my number here, number and number. So I want to produce two equivalent fractions to these ones, but with the particularity or with the feature that they're going to share the same denominator, okay? How do I achieve that in this way? I'm going to look at, well, let me erase this thing too. I'm going to look at my denominators, okay? They're different, perfectly, okay, no problem. And I'm going to choose to multiply the two by, by this denominator, okay, like, like so, 2 times 3. And if I do this, I need to also multiply the 1 times 3. I need to multiply both by the same number. And I'm going to decide or choose to multiply the 3 by this other denominator, by 2. So 3 times 2 and 1 times 2. If I do this, what's going to happen? What am I going to be um, ob ob obtaining? Well, let's see. 1 times 3, that's 3. 2 times 3, that's 6. 1 times 2, that's 2. And 3 times 2, and that's 6. You see, that is what's happening. What we are, let me raise the, the blue numbers. We don't need them anymore. What we really are doing, guys, is changing this prop, <laughs> this problem, which is my original problem, into an equivalent problem which is more, uh, let's say, more manageable, manageable. Why, why, is, why, is this, why is this problem more manageable? Because I know how to add fractions with the same denominator because of this. You see, because I already know this problem. So I'm solving this problem, which is part, uh, more difficult than these ones by changing it into want uh, uh, into an equivalent problem of this other type you see i'm reducing this is known in mathematics as reducing complexity the reducing the complexity of my problem you see that's the trick that's what you're doing every single time that you do that cross product thing this is in fact what you're doing maybe you didn't know about that and now you know <coughs> maybe you already knew and that's that's very good so that's what's happening. <coughs> okay. So now, since I since I have an equivalent problem to this one, I can perform it and and be done with it, right? This is going to be equal to three plus three plus two. That's five, and the denominator is kept the same, and I'm done. So as we knew, the result of this will be 5 over 6. You see? <clears throat> That's what is happening. And you may be thinking, well, that was too long. You know, uh, I, I don't need to do that. Yes, I understand. 
but now you understand what's what's happening okay i want you to understand what's happening if you want to keep using the rule before that's perfectly fine just be aware just be aware that this is in fact what's happening you're changing this problem into an equivalent one by producing equivalent fractions this fraction is equivalent to this one this fraction is equivalent to this one and they happen they happen to have the same denominator let's do one let's do it one more time uh, what about this let's let's say three sevens minus one over nine same idea right we we have we do not have the same denominators so we need to apply that trick so I'm going to multiply this 7 times this denominator, 7 times 9, and also the 3, right? I need to multiply both of them by the same number. And I'm going to multiply this 2 by 7. Because by doing these multiplications, I can get this. 3 times 9, 27. 7 times 9, 63. 1 times 7. 7, by the way, the minus is kept, and 9 times 7, 63. You see, I'm changing this, this problem, which was uh, more difficult or more uh, complex, into an equivalent problem, which is more manageable. Because, why? Because I have the same denominator, and I can do this very quickly. 27 minus 7, that's 20, and since the, denom the denominators are the same, I get... 63. This is my answer for this problem. 20 over 63. And I'm done. So that's how it works, guys. <coughs> now, let me tell you another case, which is not really different, but I, I, I need to tell you. Case number three. Suppose that I give you this. 3 over 27 plus 4 over 60. Same idea. These two fractions that I'm trying to add do not share the same denominator, clearly. And I need to apply the trick that I just showed you, right? I need to transform this problem into an equivalent one, okay? By the multiplication of, of by, by getting equivalent fractions to this and to this with the same denominator. But, you know, it's not gonna be a very clever idea to go straight ahead and do this. Like multiply 27 and 3 and 3 times 60, like doing this, and then 4 and 60 by 27. That's gonna be a ver that's not gonna be a very good idea. Why? Because look at these two numbers: 27 and 60 times 60, and 60 times 27. Those numbers are gonna be very large, right? And we do not want large numbers when we are operating. So what is a better trick? A better trick is before you even start doing the operation, try to simplify. Try to simplify as much as you can. Simplify first. For example, 3 over 27, can that be simplified? Yes, because both numbers can be divi divided over 3, so we get 1 over 9. Can 4 over 60 be simplified? Yes, because both can be divided over 4, and you're going to get 1 over 15. Make sure of this, okay? Make sure of what I said is true. And now, since this is the same as this, now we can proceed with this new operation, which is more manageable because it has uh, numbers which are smaller. So now I can, I can proceed with the trick that I showed you a moment ago. Let's multiply 1 and 9 by 15. 1 times 15, 9 times 15, and these 2 times 9. Why am I doing this? Because if I do that, I'm going to produce the following. 15 over, uh, this is going to be 135. Mm, yes. And then 1 times 9 is going to be 9. And this is going to be also 135. Now... This problem is equivalent to this problem, which has fractions with same denominators, and I can do it. 15 plus 9, that's going to be 24 over 135, and I'm done. <coughs> well, this could be simplified. 
okay? If, if, if at the end you can simplify the solution, do it, okay? Both numbers are divisible over 3. Both are divisible over 3. Divide them, and that's it. So this is my result, guys. So even before, what is the idea behind this specific example? Before you do anything, before you attempt to add both fractions, simplify. Try to simplify, if possible. If, not, if that's not possible, no problem. Go ahead. But always try to simplify. I cannot stress this too much. Okay? Simplify, if possible. Okay. So, now that I taught you these ideas, let's go to the... To the addition and subtraction of algebraic fractions. These ideas I, I told you only taking numbers like constants, like you know, 1 over 3 and plus 1 over 5, etc., without any variables, so that you can catch the idea. But it's gonna it's gonna work in the same way with algebraic fractions. We're gonna do exactly the same. So let's do it. Example number one. Let's add 2 over x plus y plus 3 over x plus y. These are two algebraic fractions. They have the same denominator, so I have no problem performing this right away. This is the simplest case. So, um, that's going to be 2 plus 3, 5 over the same denominator, because it's the same, so it's kept the same, and I'm done. Simple. Very easy. Second example. I get 2 over 2x plus 4y plus 4 over 3x plus 6y. <coughs> so let's see. Let's see. Before you attempt the addition, before you attempt the addition, try to simplify both this fraction and this fraction. Let's try to simplify. Now, how do you do that? You already know. Because that was the last thing you did. You simplified algebraic fractions. What was the method? What you had to do is factorize the numerator and the denominator. Uh, number 2 is already factorized. There's nothing to do. But this one can be factorized as 2 times x plus 2y. Can you see? And this one can be factorized as 4 over what is the common factor here? It's going to be 3 that multiplies x plus 2y. You see? Okay. Now, uh, can I simplify this fraction? Yes, I can cancel this 2 and this 2 because they are, they are equal factors. So this whole thing reduces to 1 over x plus 2y. And in here, I cannot do anything. Nope. Okay, I, I cannot cancel anything. So, I, the, in the end, it's going to stay the same. Okay, like so. Now, let's let's go to the... Now, well, now that we have done this, you know, it was just a mild simplification. Now we can attempt the addition. Okay, so I observed my addition. Do they have the, com the same denominator? No. Okay, because this is x plus 2y and this one is 3 times x plus 2y. So I need to do the trick. I need to transform this problem into an equivalent problem of an addition between two fractions with same denominators. So in this case, it's only necessary, guys, to multiply by 3 all of these two numbers. Look, 1 times 3 and all of this times 3. And that's going to be enough. There is no need to multiply this fraction numerator and denominator by anything. There is no need. Why? If you observe, just by this multiplication, I get 1 times 3, 3 over 3 times this binomial, which I'm going to just keep that way. You're going to see why in a moment. Plus 4 over this thing. And if you notice, now I have the addition of two fractions with the same denominators. You see, I didn't, I didn't have to do 
anything to this one only this one you see so you, you have to be you have to pay attention to what you're doing so now i can perform the addition let's do it over here that's going to be three plus four seven over the denominator which is kept the same three times x plus 2y and i'm done there is nothing else to do no sort of simplification to be performed nothing this is it this my original problem is equal to this final result let's let's go to the next exercise number three what about 2 over 2x minus y plus 3 over 3x minus 2y? Okay, so I look at my fractions and I, 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 I think to myself, can they be simplified? Nope, right? Why not? Because in order to simplify an algebraic fraction, First, I need to factorize the numerator, the denominator in both of them. I need to factorize them. But uh, if I cannot factorize any anything, I cannot simplify. This is, not, this is just a number. It cannot be factorized. This is just uh, a binomial, which is prime. It cannot be factorized. And the same for these two. So the process of simplification stops right there. We cannot do anything in that regard. And no problem, okay? Just let's let's go now to the to the addition. So let's add these two fractions. Do they share the uh, do they share the same denominator? No, clearly not. So what do we need to do? I need to multiply this fraction, numerator and denominator, by the denominator of the other one. So it's gonna be two that multiplies three x minus 2y and the same for this one I'm going to multiply that one in here and this fraction by the denominator of the first one so it's going to be 2x minus y and this one times 2x minus y and let's let's do it you're going to keep it this way look now that I have this I can if if well let me let me put it all in white because I don't want to confuse you. I'm writing the same but all in white. I'm writing exactly the same as before, if you notice. Like so. Okay. And if you notice, now we have two fractions, this one, all of this thing, plus all of this thing. Both fractions have the same denominator. Can you see? This one and this is the same. So we can proceed to perform the sum. It's going to be all of this plus all of this. over the same denominator, which is kept in the same way. Okay, like that. And um, some people are gonna, well, I, I think it's a good idea to multiply these two and these two and see if we can get some sort of simplification, okay? Let's do it. Okay, let's two times three X, let's get, we're gonna get six X minus four Y and then we have 6x plus 6x minus 3y over the multiplication of these two binomials, which is going to be 6x squared. And then it's going to be minus 7xy. And finally, plus 2y squared. Okay. And then I'm going to try to simplify anything. If I can simplify either this numerator or, the, or this denominator, I do it. So I'm going to get 6x plus 6x. That's going to be 12x. 
and then minus 4y minus 2y, that's going to be minus 7y over 6x squared minus 7xy plus 2y squared. I'm continuing from here to here. And this is going to be my result, okay? I simplified a little bit in here. I collected like terms, and this is my final result. Okay? So my original problem, which was this one, by getting rid of the blue parts, there it is. This, this fraction plus this fraction is equal to all of this. Let's do another one. Number four. We have x plus y over x squared plus 2xy plus y squared minus 1 over x plus 2y. So this is my, in this case, it's, it's a subtraction, fraction minus another fraction. And remember, remember, the first thing is try to see if we can simplify any of my two fractions. This one, this one cannot be simplified. That's, that's, that's straight away obvious. But what about this? Uh, well, when I look at this trinomial, perhaps it could be factorized. Perhaps, maybe not, but maybe, maybe, maybe it could be, right? So bring it any, any other place you want and try to factorize it. So yes, it's gonna be factorizable. It's gonna be x plus y times x plus y. This is gonna be equal to this. Make sure. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this again back here. So I'm gonna have x plus y over x plus y times x plus y. The rest is written in the same way. There, there was nothing changed. And if you notice, I can do some simplification. I can I can eliminate this factor on top with one of these factors because it's the same factor. You see? And I'm going to be having, in the end, the following. 1 over x plus y minus 1 over x plus 2y after that simplification. That's all we did. You know, we just, we only simplified. We have not yet subtracted both fractions. We only simplified the first fraction. That's all that happened. And now once I've done that, I go to my subtraction, to my operation. Do they share uh, the same denominator? No. So I need to apply the trick. I need to multiply this fraction by this denominator. I'm going to do it directly now. I'm going to get 1 times x plus 2y over x plus y times x plus 2y minus, I'm going to multiply these two numbers, numerator and denominator, by this denominator. So I'm going to get 1 times x plus y over x plus 2y times x plus y. Remember, why did we do this? So that I can have an equivalent problem with the same denominators, observe, they are the same. They are, they are in different order, but they are the same, right? Because they are the same factors. And now I can proceed to perform the subtraction. I'm gonna get only all of this minus all of this over this denominator. Or this one, right? It's the same, doesn't matter. So 1 times x plus 2y minus 1 times x plus y over x plus y that multiplies x plus 2y. Now, let's multiply everything. Let's multiply the numerator. Let's get x plus 2y and then we're going to get minus x and minus y over, we're going to get 
look, I'm gonna keep this. I'm not gonna multiply this. Let me tell you why. I hope I don't confuse you. Because I'm seeing something. Uh, well, no, it's not gonna work. Well, let, let's let's just perform the simplification of this first. So I'm gonna get x minus x. That's gonna be zero. And then 2y minus y. I'm gonna get the y over this thing. And now I can proceed to to multiply these two binomials. The reason I did not multiply them in here is because I want I tried to see whether whether I, I could get on top something like this okay so I can cancel with this other factor but no it, it didn't come out correctly so whatever so we're gonna get y and then when I multiply this times this I'm gonna get x squared plus uh, we're gonna get 3xy plus y squared and I'm done this is my solution for my original problem. And let's do one more. Number five. Two over x minus one minus x plus nine over x squared plus three x minus four. Okay, so let's try to simplify. This cannot be simplified. And this one, what about this one? Well, uh, this trinomial seems as though it can be factorized. So I'm going to do it directly. I already know it can be factorized. So I'm just going to write down the factorization. It's going to be x minus 1 times x plus 4. Make sure, please. Okay, and if you notice, the numerator and the denominator do not share a common factor, so I cannot cancel any any common factors. But uh, this was actually helpful doing this. Let's let's see why. Let's perform now the subtraction. Do they share the same den denominators? No, because x minus one is not the same as x minus one times x plus four. So I need to apply the trick. But if you notice, all I need to do is multiply this fraction by x plus 4. That's all I need to do. Look, 2 times x plus 4 over x minus 1 times x plus 4. That's all I need to do, guys. Because now I have obtained an equivalent fraction to this one. And this equivalent fraction already has the same denominator as this. You see, so I do not need to do anything to this particular fraction. I do I do not need to multiply this by this denominator. It would it would be uh, disadvantageous. I don't need to. I, I'm just gonna write x minus nine over x minus one times x plus four. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna write the same thing, and I'm done. Why? Because now I have two fractions with the same denominator. Can you see? And I can proceed to the subtraction. It's going to be this minus this. Over the same denominator. And then we can go on and try to perform a simplification of of all of these things. I'm gonna first try to simplify the numerator, only the numerator. So I'm gonna get 2x plus 8 minus x plus 9 over, I'm gonna keep the denominator in the same way. So let's let's see, we get plus 9 we get 2x minus x, we get x, and then plus 8 plus 9, we're going to get plus 17 over x minus 1 times x plus 4, and then I can multiply these two. It's going to 
give me x squared plus 3x minus 4. And that's all that we have to do. Okay, this is going to be my final result for my original subtraction. So this is how it works, guys. Of course, these are a little more complex. Take your time. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask me on Monday. And you're going to try to solve all the exercises. Activity 15 on page 109 and it goes 110. So try to attempt all of those. You're gonna, mm, this is by far the most complex subject, that, the most complex lesson. Take your time, take your time. If one is not coming up uh, correctly or something, uh, tell me, okay? Tell me on Monday, on Monday, because I'm gonna be occupied Saturday and Sunday. And we can discuss these problems on Monday. So do those ones that you can handle, you know, without much difficulty. And if you get blocked in, in the doing of some of them, don't worry. We can discuss the solutions on Monday. So don't, don't be stressed, please. Okay, guys. So that's about it. We're going to continue with this topic on Monday and when, with you, the solution to your doubts also on Monday. And I hope you have a great day. See you later, guys.